The Federal Reserve Bank is run by the Jesuits. And the Federal Reserve Bank is modeled after the papacy. I quote to you from a book titled Secrets of the Temple, How the Federal Reserve Runs the Country by William Greider, G-R-E-I-D-E-R, Simon Schuster. Um, we look on page 55. Richard Siron, S-Y-R-O-N, a vice president of the Boston Fed, who served for a time as special assistant to Walker, and here's another Irish Catholic, suggested that the institutional temperament and structure of the Federal Reserve System most resembled the Catholic Church. It doesn't say the synagogue of Satan. It says the Catholic Church, in which he had been raised. Quote, The system is just like the church. That is, the Federal Reserve System is just like the church. It's probably why I feel so comfortable with it. It's got a pope, the chairman, and a college of cardinals, the governors and bank presidents, and a curia, the senior staff. The equivalent of the laity is the commercial banks. If you're a naughty parishioner in the Catholic Church, you come to confession. In this system, if you're naughty, you come to the discount window for a loan. We even have different orders of religious thought, like Jesuits and Franciscans and Dominicans, only we call them pragmatists, monetarists, and neo Keynesians. unquote. <laughs> Here it is, the Federal Reserve System likened to the Catholic Church by an Irish Catholic himself who was a special assistant to Paul Walker. If we look in Avril Manhattan's work, The Vatican Billions, he also tells us that the Vatican has gold stored in the Federal Reserve Bank. Now, I'll tell you, if there were a bunch of Jews running the Federal Reserve Bank, do you think the papacy would allow them to hold its gold if those Jews weren't subordinate to the Pope? No way! No way! If I was the Pope, I wouldn't. Anybody that holds my gold better be my servant then do what I tell him. Otherwise, you're not holding my gold. Doesn't that make sense? Okay. We see that the Federal Reserve is controlled by the Jesuits. It's modeled after the papacy. The Federal Reserve Board, the governor of the Federal Reserve is the Pope. Now, let's take a look at these big nine banks. We shall review these nine banks after we come back from station identification. And they are Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of New York Mellon, and State Street Corporation. This is Brother Eric John Phelps, Biblical Truth and History and Prophecy. We shall return and show you how the Jesuits are controlling these biggest banks of the country. Amen. Brother John Phelps, Biblical Truth and History and Prophecy, returning to you on this beautiful Wednesday as we begin to examine these nine big banks that the Jesuits in control of the Federal Reserve Bank, as well as the U.S. Congress through special individuals, have granted over $700 billion. And they're going to hold us, us working stiffs, as collateral for this debt which spells slavery for us. So we need to understand these men who have done this to us, and we need to resist them wherever we might be, whether we're a lawyer, a judge, a doctor, economist, a journalist. We need to set our sights on exposing the power of this Jesuit order in our country that we might not be destroyed, because if this persists, we will be destroyed. They love money, they love gold and silver, they've hoarded it all, and now they're moving in for the kill. But you know, the Lord always raises up a standard when the enemy comes in like a flood. And you know, my white brethren, that's you. That's you. You have the honor to be in the place of the standard that the Lord raises up 
against these evil, wicked, sinful, spiritual bastards who hate the Bible, who hate the Reformation, who hate the middle class, and who hate progress. If you don't believe the Jesuits hate progress, you just read Pope Pius IX's Syllabus of Errors, where he condemns completely and totally modern progress. How can you have modern progress if you have a banking system that's wrecked? All right, the first bank we're looking at is Goldman Sachs. Now, the chairman and CEO of Goldman Sachs at this moment is Lloyd Blankfein, obviously a racial Jew. Gary Cohen, president and chief operating officer, who is a racial Jew. And John Winkle, Winkle Reed, which appears to be, by that last name, a racial Jew. He's president and chief operating officer. So we have token Jews manning Goldman Sachs. But we have some very powerful papal knights that have been with Goldman Sachs. And I will read to you this man's name. His name is Jeffrey T. Biasi. Jeffrey T. Biasi. He's a knight of Malta, a Roman Catholic. Um, Mr. Biasi is a trustee of the Carnegie Corporation of New York. The chairman and senior partner of Roundtable Investment Partners a general partner in the Roan Group, special limited partner of the Tremont Group, member of the board of directors of Freddie Mac. Wow. So here's the Knight of Malta on the board of directors of Freddie Mac. Do you think this Knight of Malta had anything to do with the crash of Freddie Mac? Do you think they crash certain of their institutions for their own benefit? Of course they do. An overseer of the Wharton School, by the way, the Wharton School of Economics is the most prominent uh, economic school there in New York City, and Donald Trump that night of Malta attended that, after he attended Jesuit Fordham. A, a trustee of the Orders Boston College, so he's a trustee of the Jesuit Orders Boston College. A, je a director of CFR-controlled Brookings Institute. He is a trustee of Knight of Malta Joe P. Kennedy Enterprises. He's a member of the Trilateral Commission. That's right, Alex. Alex Jones, let's bring in the Knight of Malta Jeffrey T. Biasi as a member of the Trilateral Commission, and let's take that to Rome. Let's blame the Pope now, as we ought to. Uh, trustee of the Papal Foundation. Mr. Biasi has been vice chairman of J.P. Morgan Chase, serving as CEO of J.P. Morgan, evidencing the bond between both Morgan and Rockefeller empires. And by the way, I'll get into this. The J.P. Morgan Chase came out of Chemical Bank. And Chemical Bank was strictly run by the Knights of Malta. J. Peter Grace, who ran his W.R. Grayson company out of New York City, banked with Chemical Bank. I studied him. He had 11 Knights of Malta on his board with him. J.P. Morgan Chase is a continuation of the Knights of Malta Chemical Bank. He is a founding member of the Beacon Group, later acquired by Chase. He's a senior member of Goldman Sachs, serving as a partner in charge of global finance. So here's this Knight of Malta, Jeffrey T. Biasi, B-O-I-S-I. -I. Google him. And this guy is a man of power at Goldman Sachs. So even though the name is Jewish, the Knights of Malta run it. Receiving the Cancer Research Institutes of Oliver R. Grace Award and honored by John Paul II as a steward of St. Peter. So Biasi is nothing more than one of the great merchants, one of the kings of the earth, the great merchants of the earth serving Rome, that great city. And he is a partner in charge of global finance at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is to be given $10 billion in this gift from the Federal Reserve Bank through the American Congress. By the way, that Barack Obama and John McCain both voted for, so what's the difference? You white men that go to vote in these federal elections, and if you vote for Obama or you vote for McCain, you're giving a mandate for those sinners to tell you what to do, and they both serve the Pope! When are we?
really going to wake up and advocate secession. That no matter which horse is running, the house owns them both and the house wins on them both. It's worse than a casino. It's Goldman Sachs. On September 21st, 2008, the Federal Reserve approved the transition from an investment bank to a bank holding company.